The gain is the commodity, the new life, the new value, the new treasure, the new strength, the new muscle, the new whatever, the new bank account. But I'm telling you, it will not happen unless you put your better philosophy and your attitude into an activity program, a labor program, a work program. Without this, you've got no new miracle for your life. Key to my whole lecture for the day. This is it. This is the miracle piece. In fact, in the Bible, now I'm an amateur on the Bible, but in the Bible there's a book called The Book of the Activities. It's an extraordinary book. In fact, on everybody's best list, no matter what scholar puts a list together of the best writings ever written, this book always appears. Whether they're a believer in Christianity or not, every scholar puts this book on their list of the best writings ever written in the last six and a half thousand years. Interestingly enough, Old Testament always appears on everybody's list, no matter who puts it together. New Testament always appears. And this book out of New Testament always appears on everybody's list of the best writings ever written. And the reason is because it's one of the most extraordinary pieces of writing that's ever been written in 6,000 years. <clears throat> The book of the activities is a chronological detailed description of the labor and the activities of the early Christians and the early Christian leaders in great detail. And when you finish reading this extraordinary book, here's what you will say. No wonder. That's what you will say when you finish this book. You will say, no wonder Christianity has lasted for 2,000 years and has become such a powerful influence in the world. Now, whether you're a believer or non-believer, we're just dealing with facts here. When you finish the book, you'll have the secret to the answer. No wonder it's so powerful, so influential, has lasted for 2,000 years. No wonder, look what they did. Now, you've got to jot that word down. Look what they did. That's the secret to the miracle process. Now, someone might argue with me and say, no, no, Mr. Owen, the secret to the miracle process of Christianity was, look what they said. Well, I know what they said was important. That was the philosophy. What they said was the philosophy. But the philosophy would not have worked the miracle that it would have lasted 2,000 years. So let me give it to you in a little philosophical phrase. Here it is. Wisdom. Wisdom uninvested in labor is wasted and works no miracle. Someone else may say, no, Mr. Owen, the miracle of Christianity was look how strong they felt. Look at the faith they had. Look at the courage they had. Strong feelings, emotions, power. I know that. But let me give you another phrase. Here it is. Faith uninvested in labor is wasted. There is no miracle without the labor part. That's why some people are trying to become successful with, you know, subliminal affirmations. It's too silly. Even multi-track. <laughs> Bombard pre-conscious, subconscious. I'm telling you, that's not where it's at. I got a good phrase for you to take home. Affirmation without discipline is the beginning of delusion. Unless you put a good idea now into labor, it works no miracle. But if you put wisdom and faith into labor, activity... Now, the chances to work a miracle are absolutely profound. Now, the labor part comes in two parts. Let me give you that. Here's number one. Do what you can. Just don't neglect to do what you can. If you should eat an apple a day and you could eat an apple a day and you don't, that's called formula for disaster. Cardiovascular problems and all other kind of problems. Should, could, don't, that's formula for disaster. Now, you've got to come up with your own shoulds. Don't let me dictate your shoulds. But if you say, I should, and I could, but I don't, then I'm telling you, you're on the wrong track. Six years from now, you'll be driving what you don't want to drive, living where you don't want to live. Don't have the health you want, don't have the treasures you want, empty purse, empty heart. You cannot let yourself fall into that kind of a disastrous formula, should, could, won't. It's disaster. So here's number one to perform a new miracle for your life. Number one, do what you can. If you can walk around the block, do it. If you can eat an apple a day, do it. If you can develop better health practices, do it. If you can get a book, get it. If you can read, what? Read. read. If you can change, change. If you can take some notes, take some notes. If you can learn, learn. If you can go, go. If you can do it, do it. Don't leave the littlest things undone. It's called 
heading down the wrong road. You say, well, can you turn your life around with something as simple as an apple a day? Yes, where else would you start? (laughs) Are you going to wait for some flash of revelation to come out of the sky? I'm telling you, it's not going to happen. It starts with an apple. And if you don't start there, then you've got to put up with your own lack at the end of another six, eight, ten years. And that's something nobody else can fix except you. Democrats can't fix it. Nobody else can fix it. The authors of the world can't fix it. The wise people of the world can't fix it. It's only something you can fix by putting up your own sail, refining your own sail so that you could care less about the wind that blows. That's why we've gone through all of this. Now, the miracle is performed by two things. Number one, do what you can. That's all life asks us to do. Just do whatever you can and don't neglect it. It'll start a miracle. Two thousand years ago, on April 15th, one of Jesus' disciples, now from my amateur point of view, let me put it to you best I can. One of Jesus' disciples said to Jesus, it's time to pay our taxes and we don't have any money. That's how come I know it was around April 15th. (laughs) That's close. In response to this statement by this disciple, Jesus said, no problem. Now, why could he say no problem? Well, word has it, word has it if you're a scholar at all, word has it Jesus was a miracle worker. If you handed a problem to a miracle worker, what would he be inclined to say? No problem. You've got to hang out with people like that. I'm telling you. Miracle worker. I belong to a little small group. We do business around the world. These guys are all miracle workers. What an incredible group. If you handed any of them a problem, guess what they would say? No problem. They'll read how many books to solve it? How many it, uh, that it takes? If they need to consult, how much consulting will they do? As much as it takes. How early will they get up? As early as it takes. So it is no problem. You've got to hang out with people like that. You cannot believe the thrill of being associated with miracle workers. People who who will do whatever it takes to get the job done, perform miracles. Jesus said, I'm telling you, it's no problem. He said, it's going to be simple. This time to pay taxes and haven't got any money. It's going to be easy. Must must have been to my seminar. (laughs) Jesus said, it's going to be easy. He said to his disciples, here's how easy it's going to be. Just go fishing. Now, it can't be any easier than that. And especially for this disciple, his name was Peter. And Peter was what? A fisherman. Now, if you can fish and you should fish and you don't fish, that's how come you get no miracle. But he said to his disciples, just go fishing. And the first fish you catch, look in his mouth. Peter said, okay. He was used to strange things happening. (laughs) Peter goes fishing, catches the first fish, looks in his mouth, what? Coins. Coins in the fish's mouth. Peter says, wow, coins. And he starts counting and adding up the value of these coins. Guess how much it added up to? Exactly enough money to pay his taxes and Jesus' taxes. I'm telling you, Jesus did pay taxes. Now the question is, should he? And my book coming up is going to answer that question, right? Yes, of course. Jesus and kids should pay taxes. Everybody (laughs) has to pay. Now, what do we call coins in the fish's mouth? Here's what we call it. A miracle. And here's why we call it a miracle. Simply because we don't quite understand how it works. That's all. It doesn't mean it doesn't work. It means we don't quite understand how it works. Which is true of all miracles. And most of us, all of our life is a miracle. I'm telling you. Here's the greatest miracle of all. God says, now I'm an amateur on God too, but let me give you my best shot. God says, if you'll plant the seed, I'll make the tree. Wow, you can't have a better arrangement than that. Number one, gives God the tough end of the deal. What if you had to make the tree? That'd keep you up late night trying to figure out, how do you make a tree? 
God says, no, leave the miracle part to me. I got the seed, the soil, and the sunshine, and the rain, and the miracle of the seasons, and I'm God, and I can do all this miraculous stuff. I just have reserved something very special for you, and that's what? Plant. That's it. Not chant. <laughs> no, you don't have to chant and sleep under a pyramid. No. But if you want a miracle, you've got to do whatever you can do. And if that's plant, it's plant. If it's read, it's read. If it's change, it's change. If it's study, it's study. If it's work, it's work. Labor, whatever you've got to do. So that's number one. Labor that works miracles. Number one, do what you can. Now here's number two. Do the best you can. Now for a lot of people, that's not their philosophy. Do the best they can. They pass on that. Guy slips in late on the job. They don't seem to notice. He stretches his lunch break two hours. Nobody seems to mind. 4.15 is the first one on the parking lot, heading for happy hour. <laughs> Guy says, best as I can calculate, I'm putting in about a half a day's work and I'm collecting a full day's pay. And the guy says, I got it Wire. made. Little does he know, the seeds of his own disaster are already being sown by his lousy philosophy. Doing less and less and wanting more and more, I'm telling you, it's called disaster. But develop your own philosophy. Here's, here's the best philosophy. Do what you can, number one. Number two, do the best you can. My father even taught me, always do more than you get paid for. Why? To make an investment in your future. Do more than you get paid for. Now, the unions would argue with us on that. <laughs> but here's the clue. Let other people have their philosophy. And let that take them wherever they're going to go. And let you have your own philosophy. Don't set your sail by everybody else's sail. There's some people that are heading for the rocks. They're heading for disaster. I'm asking you to privately take all the information you can possibly get from me and from everybody else that's got something valuable to share. And then you program your own program to set your own sail. Don't just pick up someone else's philosophy and go buy it. Set your own sail. And here's the best advice I can give you. Number one, do what you can. Number two, do the best you can. All kinds of miracles start to happen when you do the best you can. If we all fell on the floor right now and did as many push-ups as we possibly could. And let's say for some incredible reason, uh, you haven't been into push-ups lately. I, I can't imagine why, but let's say. <laughs> and let's say the best you can do is five. And you look up at the rest of us when you've finished... And you say to all of us, five is the best I can do. We can tell by the look on your face, that's probably true. <laughs> five is the best you can do. Now, here's a big question. Is five all you can do? The answer is no. Here's the secret. If you rest a little, you can do five more. And here's what's exciting. You don't have to rest for a week. <laughs> If you just rest a little, you can do five more. And if you rest a little, what? You can do five more. And if you rest a little, you can do eight more. Eight. Eight. I thought five was the best you can do. No. If you keep up the repetitive process, rest a little and get back to it, I'm telling you, it'll what? Increase. And if you rest a little, you can do eight. If you rest a little, you can do eight. If you rest a little, you can do twelve. Twelve. How did we get from five to twelve? It's a miracle. <laughs> Did you know you can keep up that process and finally get up to doing 50 push-ups when five was the best you could do and now you can do 50? How do you multiply something by 10 go from five to 50? It's a miracle. And here's how the miracle works. Number one, do what you can. Number two, do the best you can. Here's number three, rest very little. <laughs> what is your philosophy on labor versus rest? Here's an Old Testament philosophy. Here's an Old Testament philosophy. It says what? Six days labor and what? One day rest. Is that a good philosophy? Remember now, don't be swept along to disaster by somebody else's philosophy. You've got to develop your own philosophy. A lot of the people who are around you are headed for disaster. And if you pick up their habits... And if you pick up their vocabulary, and if you pick up what they read, and if you talk like they talk, you're headed for disaster. 
You cannot just buy everybody's philosophy. Here's an ancient suggestion on philosophy on labor versus rest. Six days labor, one day rest. Now, I'm not saying five and two isn't okay. Hey, if God would have thought of five and two, he might have made it five and two. You can't think of everything when you're putting one of these together. <laughs> but what about six one? Well, kids may come up with the obvious. I love to talk with kids. They cut through everything, come up with the obvious. Here's what success is. A refined study of the obvious. Kids would come up with the obvious here. What would they say? Hey, six one's probably best because if you rest too long, the weeds take the garden. You've got to note that. If you rest too long, the weeds take the garden. Can you think of somebody that's right now about where they were 10 years ago? That may be one of the problems. They keep working hard, but they keep resting too long, and the weeds keep taking it all. They need what? A refinement of philosophy. Because with that poor philosophy, I'm telling you, the wind is going to take them to the rocks. And 10 years from now, they'll be driving what they don't want to drive, wearing what they don't want to wear, living where they don't want to live, and blaming the Democrats. <laughs> Come on. Jerry talked about no nonsense. That's how I got my life changed. I found a teacher who gave me the no nonsense and said, Mr. Rohn, you've messed up. Let me show you how to change all that. Gosh, that was easy language for me to understand. And he put it in such simple terms. I took it and bought it and went it and changed my life, changed my whole future. I'm asking you to consider, at least consider doing the same thing. Do the best you can. It'll perform miracles. Multiply. Here's what else is exciting. The same thing that goes for your muscle goes for your money. If you can multiply your muscle by 10, only five push-ups and finally get to 50, you can do it with your money. I not only did it with my muscle, I did it with my money. I'm broke at age 25. I'm a millionaire at age 31. And I'm telling you, anybody that wants to make a drastic change in your income, you can do it, starting with a brand new philosophy. You say, well, Mr. Owen, here's what they pay. What do you care what they pay? What's your philosophy on your future? What is your current economic philosophy for your future in your family? If I lingered after this seminar was over, and just you and me one-on-one -on -one got together, and you gave me the details of your current economic plan, would I get so excited I'd go across the country and lecture on it? <laughs> you say, well, no, Mr. Owen, you probably wouldn't want to lecture on my financial plan. My next question is, why not? How come you've arrived at this point in your life and you don't have a superior economic plan for the future? How did you get here? I'm telling you, if that's where you find yourself, you have messed up. <laughs> but here's what's exciting about this seminar today. I brought you to this seminar today and invited you to come here, not to get on your case, just do that. That's what my teacher did, but not to leave you there. The reason I'm laboring so hard to go through all this stuff today is to give you a little better track to run on. At least consider it. So that five years from now, you've got the health you want, you've got the family you want, you've got the relationship you want, you've cleaned up all the neglect, and you're on track. So number one, do what you can. Here's number two, do the best you can. Now the reason for doing the best you can, there's another reason. To develop the skills. Repetition is the mother of skills. Now, why develop the skills? Here's why. Skills makes labor more valuable. If you just labor, you'll make a living. If you skillfully labor, you can make a fortune. 